All right, here I wanted to throw this in there real quick of how I'm going to show you how I'm getting my gas to burn underwater. I'm going to show you how to get that flame to burn underwater. And you got to have this right here, the Vortex Turbulence Shield, or the VTS for short. And all it is is a coupling that I have that goes on the end here. Okay, I'm going to set this down. I'm going to go ahead and put that coupling on there. See, it's just a coupling. And that coupling will keep the turbulence off the end of the torch. Okay, that's what puts that flame out. You see, the, the hydrogen has its own oxygen, so it can burn underwater. That's not the problem. What happens is it goes out because at the end of this flame, let me light this here. You don't want that to go out from the turbulence. So I'm going to show you right now that that's going to burn underwater. It's not going to go out. This is important if you if you intend to park your starship underwater. You I don't believe we should be imparting such advancements. You got to be able to do this, and you can light these flames underwater using a laser. But you got to have a blue laser. It's a little complicated. I'll explain it in another video, and I'll show you. But you can light this with a laser. The engine exhaust must have a, a section, a shield like this. It's got to have this turbulence shield so you can prevent the vortex on the main thrusters, prevent a burnout. Because you'll just have a burnout, you know, it'll just go out as soon as you turn the flame on. Let's go out in here and show you. See how it went out when I tilted it? Now let me relight it and I'll show you. We'll stay on. It has a lot to do with that shield and the vortex. Watch. See how it stays lit? So that's why you have the shield on there. It stops the vortex from putting out the flame. I just wanted to throw that in there so you guys would see that. See how that worked. If there is any hope in preserving the future, it lies with you and your people. See, watch what happens without the shield. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in there without the, the vortex turbulence shield, okay? Watch what happens. It's gonna flash back on me. Well, I'm lucky it didn't flash back, but you can see it clearly went out. It's gonna do that every time. So when you build your next fuel cell and you invent and you design a water fuel cell reactor, you must keep in mind that it has to be low cost, and you have to do do it right. You know, the guy that does it right and the cheapest is always going to win out. You know, water fuel cell industry, that's how it is. You know, everybody's working on their own stuff. Turn some power on here. Hang on, turn power on. There it comes. It's so cool to see the gas come up through there like that. So I'm going to go ahead and do an equipment breakdown. I'm going to go ahead and break down this bubbler next. I'm going to break down the whole, you know, I broke down the reactor here. Just some of the stuff I wanted to show you. You know, more often than not, you know, ideas are stolen from the inventors. As in the case of Stanley Myers, think of that. You know, you got to remember, you know, this is meterless power. It's so cheap, it'd be impossible for me to sell it to you. That's what's so funny. Now, I know you've probably heard that somewhere else before, but I mean it. You know, I've thought about selling these things on eBay, but I was like, you know, so, it's so cheap to build and so simple and so easy. You guys are going to be able to copy it and build thousands of them. There will probably be millions of these things built. So I was like, you know, I'll just film it and let them have it. Let's do a whole breakdown of some of this stuff, you know. This is what Stan would want in. It's just too cheap to meter, you know? It would be impossible. 
We have made too many irreversible mistakes in our development. Hopefully you can learn something from it. Okay, as you can see the exciter array is down here at the bottom of the reactor. You have the light and the positive and the negative connections are on the outside. And it's a good idea to label those. You want to make sure you don't get them mixed up. You want to start with the same connections all the time. You can see my one system valve here on the outside. Always use distilled water. See, I've taken my electrolyte out right here and I'm saving it. I'm going to filter it a couple times through a shirt. This is what I do. I hold on to my electrolyte. You don't want to use up your sodium carbonate. So always hold on to your water. Don't throw it out. Use the same water and then just filter it and continue on as you do. So here's my riser. I've taken the whole thing down. It's easy to take this apart. You want to protect the bottom half here. You don't want to ever crack this or anything because the bottom half is the heart and the core of the entire reactor. These top parts are easy to replace. I can just take them off another one and snap them together real quick. They're like Legos. There's nothing to it. I want to turn this on here. Let me turn this on. I'm not pulling any power right now. See, I have distilled water in here. Nothing but distilled water in here right now. But I'm going to dump in some of my electrolyte solution. I've got two tablespoons in here. I just want to show you something. Hang on. Let that sink down in there. immediately you get some action and the electrodes come on and see now I'm pulling power so distilled water won't pull will not conduct electricity you know it's not going to conduct low low voltage electricity you need very high voltage electricity water is a liquid dielect that's why we add the electrolyte to lower the resistance once you lower the resistance you can start producing the gas I mean, there comes a point where you can use too much electrolyte. You don't want to overdo it. But I basically control my entire system with the electrolyte. I very carefully time it. That's why I don't want to lose this water right here. I spent a lot of time adding little bits of electrolyte, a tablespoon at a time, to get it up to exactly where I want to run it. Okay? The more I add, the higher the watts are going to be, the more amps it's going to pull. And the more heat you're going to generate. you got to remember that, too. So here's my external light. It's been removed normally goes on the back. I just wanted to show you guys some of this stuff. And when I put it all back together, I'll have to use my thread tape and my magic loom. You know, with this convenient, simple one valve system, it's easy to make changes to the reactor. It's easy to clean. And think about that when you build these things. So the bottom half is very important. Yeah, so to burn underwater, it's very important that you have the VTS. It's the turbulence that puts out that flame. So as long as you have it shielded around the end there like that, you're good.
good to go. Let's stick it in there and I'll show you. Please do not be sad. If there is any hope in preserving the future, it lies with you 